This is Still in the Clear, the podcast that distills the art and science of home distilling into easy to follow, audible nuggets for the beginning moonshiner. This information is for education and entertainment purposes only. You could even call it fiction if you want to. Home distilling may be illegal in your area. I'm your host, Cyrus, and I'm just a guy that lives in the woods and likes to make shine. So let's get into it. Hey, if you like Still in the Clear and want to help support the show, there are a number of ways to do it, and some don't even cost you anything. Just go to stillintheclear.com slash support, or click the link in the show notes to find out how you can help. Thanks. Let's get to the show. Today, we're talking about specific gravity. Uh, what is specific gravity, and why is it useful to the home distiller? So... Specific gravity is the difference between pure water and another liquid. So in our case, as distillers, we use a special hydrometer called a sacrometer because it measures the uh, comparative density based on a sugar content. So that's what we're measuring uh, with specific gravity is the sugar content. We use this special hydrometer to measure the amount of sugar before fermentation starts compared to the amount of sugar after fermentation is complete. So basically we're measuring how much sugar has been consumed by the yeast, which can give us an idea of how much alcohol has been, has been produced during the fermentation process. And this can be very useful for us. Um, it's important to note before we get into how we can use this information, I want to talk about how you read the hydrometer. Um, so when you're reading your hydrometer, you'll notice that the level where the water touches the hydrometer is slightly curved. So the hydrometer is made of glass and the water doesn't sit against the glass in a straight line. And depending on how you're measuring it, whether maybe you're taking a sample and you're using it in a test tube, so it's a narrow cylinder that's tall, for that vessel is narrow and tall, that curve is going to be more exaggerated. Uh, the taller and narrower the vessel is. And so where do you take your reading when the level is curved against the glass that's marked with straight lines? The liquid curves against the glass, and I would tell you why that is if I knew, but I don't have a clue. It's just useful for us to know that that is true. And we need to know where to take our measurements. So this curvature, uh, it's also called the meniscus. The proper reading is at the bottom of that curve. And this is important because depending on how tall and narrow your vessel is and how exaggerated that curve is, it could be the difference in a couple of, uh, a couple of points on the scale on the hydrometer. So it can make a difference. Now, if you're just dropping your hydrometer into, say, a five gallon bucket that your mash is in, you're, uh, it's not going to make that much of a difference because of the width and the width of that vessel that your liquid is in that you're measuring. So just keep that in mind. Uh, kind of a side note when talking about the hydrometer for specific gravity, or any hydrometer, really, they're all the same. Uh, it's, it's also important to know that the hydrometers are calibrated to a specific pressure and temperature, and that's usually, uh, they're usually calibrated to sea level and around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. When you buy your hydrometer, 
it will come with instructions to let you know what that what the ideal range is for it to be calibrated correctly and if you're outside of that if you're using it outside of that range there will also be a chart included for how to adjust for any variances in the pressure or the temperature okay so how are we going to use this tool well when you're making your mash you'll need to get two readings two hydrometer readings and the first uh, is the original gravity or the OG which you'll take just before you pitch your yeast so you're done you're done mashing and you know you've let your temperature drop and just before you pitch your yeast you want to take the original gravity reading and then the second is the final gravity reading which you take after all the signs of fermentation have stopped and a lot of distillers will take readings in between those two points just to kind of see how things are progressing along but with these two readings the final uh, this I'm sorry the the original gravity and the final gravity uh, the first thing we can do is easily calculate the ABV or the alcohol by volume of our wash so that we have an idea of what to expect in our final product. And it's a simple mathematical equation. You just take the final gravity, you subtract the original gravity, and you multiply by 131.25. And that will give you your ABV. And comparing these two values, these two readings, it'll not only uh, give us an idea of, well, it will confirm that the yeast did its job of converting sugar into alcohol. And it'll also tell you basically how well it did. So, you know, if your, if your final gravity reading is, is still high, and you no longer have any signs of fermentation going on, then it's likely that your fermentation has stalled and the conversion of sugar into alcohol is incomplete. So that would save you a lot of time because if you didn't have those two readings, you would just think that your fermentation process is finished and then start distilling. And, you know, this would, you would be really disappointed to find out that you didn't get as much alcohol as you thought you were you should have got because the the yeast had stalled and didn't finish its job and so there wasn't as much alcohol and you wasted all that time in the distilling process when you could have known ahead of time had you been uh, tracking the specific gravity psychrometers are inexpensive and they're a great troubleshooting tool to remove a lot of the guesswork. It's not going to troubleshoot every problem that you are going to come across, but it's probably one of the best tools in the box for a home distiller. So I highly recommend you get one. I will leave some links in the show notes for uh, recommendations and uh, for where you can get those. And uh, that's really it for specific gravity for now, just kind of a primer on specific gravity. So uh, a short episode this week, and that's going to be it. Well, that wraps up this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Share this episode with people you think might enjoy it. That would be much appreciated. It'll sure help our show grow. And don't forget, doing is improving. Have a good one. Talk to y'all next week.